What was it like being a child during the war? Well, that was quite exciting because children didn't realise the seriousness of it. Plenty going on. Guns used to fire and planes used to get shot down and um, there was a motor torpedo boats in and out and you used to hear gunfire out at sea. You know, we thought there was a time when we thought the Germans were coming. Although the, the children didn't realise how serious it was. And quite a lot of children <coughs> from Felixstowe, especially the big schools, got evacuated. Did being at Felixstowe make a difference? There was a time when um, Felixstowe was... Felixstowe was a restricted area, but civilians couldn't come to Felixstowe without a good reason. And all the buses used to be stopped at Nacton Crossroads. And either the uh, regular army or the Home Guard, Dad's army, used to come aboard and and, you, and everybody had to carry identity cards with them. And if there were any strangers on the bus and they couldn't give a good reason why they were coming to Felix, so they refu refused entry. They just said, you just have to go back. But we got away quite lightly, really, because there was um, quite... A, well, Felix, though, was a naval base. Ipswich was a naval base. And so was Harwich and Parkston. And also, a few miles north of Felix, there was Bordsey, where radar was invented, and um, of course everybody thought the Germans were going to bomb that. How did it change everyday life? Well, there was just food shortage. Everybody had ration books, and um, you, you, I used to go up, used to go up into Fredericksow to get some um, the shopping, and you used to have to take my ration books. And um, every now and again in the shops, if they had a surplus of something, everybody had. A, all the food was on rations and um, you were allowed so much on each ration, so many ounces of tea, so many ounces of sugar and all that. And, but occasionally a shop would get a surplus of something and they couldn't give, it, couldn't give extra to everybody so that all of a sudden there'd be a notice go up. People whose names begin A to F are entitled to two or three ounces more. Oh, and if I missed that, you know, my mother, you, your mothers used to get on to you because you missed it. So you... When you went in the shop, you had to look up and see if you, you know if you're entitled to any extra food. Most children learnt to recognise um, German aircraft around, uh, as well as British ones, you know. And you were told to keep if there were German aircraft about you more. You were told to keep out of sight if you could, you know, or undercover. Just at the back of my house, outside the back garden, there was a what they called a Bofors gun, and that was an anti-aircraft gun. And that used to be quite noisy at night when that was a quick firing gun. Bang, 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 like that. Were you evacuated? Well, I went away with um, with my mum for a time to stay with some friends somewhere in Oxford for about... Well, it was during the summer. That was a long, hot summer there. And we even got bombed up there. And we went back, and just after we got back, the doodlebug started, what we used to call the flying bombs. And then the V2s and that, but uh, we, we survived it. More or less at the beginning of the war, I had several aunties in America, and one of them used to come over about every two years to visit the family, go travel around, and come over for about two, two or three months to see, well, to see the family. And when she came to see us, she said, um, I'm booked to go back on the boat I came over on, a certain month. Do you want me to said to my mum? Do you want me to take Peter back with you, and he can be with my children, go to school with my children, and I'll bring him up. And she said the war is bound to be over in six months. Everybody thought the war was going to be over in six months instead of lasting five years. And um, my mum was undecided, so my auntie said, "Well, I'll cancel my trip back on the ship that I was going back on." And um, give you and go back on the next on the next time she goes over. Well, unfortunately, that ship was named the Athenia, and that was sunk by a U-boat. You know, and, and quite a few people were drowned. And of course, that made my mum's mind up. <laughs> now you you stay here. And my mum's attitude was, we're 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 a family, so we might as well all stay together in the war. You know. What special measures were taken? They were very, we were told um, not to speak to strangers because they, they knew there were German spies about. And um, to that end, all the buses, 
instead they didn't have destination boards on they might have had a number on so you knew where they were going but they didn't say it's rich or felix or anything anything to disguise the germans used to drop spies and uh, to confuse them where they were they they didn't have any local names and felix though felix though was blotted out on all sorts of things on tradesmen's vans and on shops and all sorts of things and um it wasn't till the end of the war came that um they and they reopened Felix or started to go on Felix O Pier again. They suddenly found out because steamers used to go to Felix O Pier before the war, and there's a bloody great name board in about six foot high letters facing across the North Sea saying Felix O. Was your father in the forces? Yeah, he was in the navy, and he was in the he was in the First World War in the army, and he put his age up when he was sixteen. Um, he put his age up to eighteen and joined the army. And um, that that sort of backfired after after the end of this war. He got a job in a factory in Ipswich, and uh, when he got to the when he thought he got to the age of sixty five, he he went to retire. When he sent for his birth certificate, because he put his age up, he found out he was two years younger than he thought he was. So he had two years more extra to work, which sort of. Uh, annoyed him a little bit and as soon as the war started he was working for Chatham Dockyard at the time as a civilian employee but he volunteered to join the Navy and they gave him a rank of petty officer. What happened at the end of the war? Well there was a big big parties everywhere I remember in Felixstowe up near the, what we call the Crescent in Felixstowe everybody was out dancing and singing and shouting and hollering the e-boats, which was the British equivalent of motor torpedo boats, which were stationed at Felixstowe, the, the, the e-boat fleet um, officially surrendered at Felixstowe and the the admiral that was in charge of them came into Felixstowe Dock to surrender, hand the surrender over to the commander of the Felixstowe Docks. And I, I remember seeing that. Admiral Karl Bruning was his name, a German. Had a beautiful... Had a beautiful... Um, leather coat on and leather trousers and saw him come ashore off the e-boat and do his salute and that. 